what could be a catalyst for a rate cut closer to what we see right now? To the floor show, Sarge, what do you think? I mean, and, and it's not something good. That's the issue. We, I'm not sure we want to see. No, no, we don't. I, I think the only catalyst for a rate cut right now would be, a, would be a collapsing of the long end of the yield curve. And you can't really credit the Fed, although I don't disagree with what they're doing right now. You cannot credit the Fed for a pop in housing markets because the 30-year pays more than it did four months ago. So over the last four months, mortgage rates have actually gone higher. So I, I think you actually have to credit the president's fiscal policy for a pop in the housing market. You have to credit lower corporate taxes for the increase in, in employment. You have hmm. to credit uh, lower income taxes, federally anyway, for the, for the increase in savings. Americans are saving a higher percentage of their income than they have in 10, 12 years. So I think this is where this comes from. What are we, about a year and a half? Post tax cut, some people are starting just Almost to realize two. that. Took some some people some time to get their get up to get the ground under their feet. Yeah, well, I think that's what it is. Well, you know, and and I I agree with you. Some of the president's policies absolutely have lit a fire under so many regions of business. But Larry, what about um, you know the Federal Reserve cutting three times? Granted, they had to kind of be bashed over the head to uh, hello, you got to do this. They yeah, cut three I, times. Maybe that also takes time to work its way through the system. No, it definitely does. And I think they're taking a chapter out of the book the 1990s when they would cut uh, 75 basis points and wait and see. Right now, that's the least path of resistance for the Fed. But I'm of the mind that the, the, you know, the catalyst for cutting rates, and I do believe it's better 50-50 chance that they will cut them before July, is the subtle economic damage done by the trade war combined with the fact that it's really hard for the Fed or anybody right. to achieve a 2% inflation rate on a consistent basis. So we consider inventory levels, capital expenditures, real estate, uh, et cetera, I do think there's a better than 50-50 chance to be preemptive. It's just hard because you're so close to the zero bound. It's not as effective as if they were raising rates. That's the issue. Phil, uh, the, the minutes mm -hmm. from the most recent meeting had just come out, and that's precisely what we saw. There was this concern that the, the trade war might be protracted. We're already in month 16 and a half, could stretch to 17. There have been trade headlines, as you know. What do you think? And, and let's also spin it to where do you put your money at a point like this where we don't know? Yeah, I, I, I think the thing is uh, you have to expect that something's going to get done because that's all the sign. But that is, on the other hand, the risk, right? And that's what the market is reacting to, headline versus headline. But there are more and more signs that that's going to get done. So you can't, you know, I would not play that they're not going to get the trade war done or at least the first phase of it done uh, right. at any time. You know, I think if you look at the big picture on the, the whole economy and the manufacturing number, for example, you bring that into to play, it really shows you that some of the weakness that we previously had seen in the manufacturing sector may have been a one-off. And I think we're seeing that in a lot of places, not only here in the United States, but we're seeing that uh, in China, for example. Some of their manufacturing data is actually getting a little bit stronger. So okay. maybe that big slowdown was based on fear of the trade war. Good to see you guys. Sarge, yeah. Larry, Phil, we'll see you next time on our amazing original floor show. All right, up next, Silicon Valley.